Good evening, everyone. I'm Gary Buzik. This year, this year marks GLAD's 35th anniversary. And at these milestones, I always think it is good to remember our heroes. There are many, but I would like to mention two of mine. John Ward, GLAD's founder, who had the vision back in 1978 that we could change the world. And John Mitzel, or just plain Mitzel, the owner of the Calamus Bookstore, who died three weeks ago today. It's fair to say that Mitzel was one of the first loud, uncompromising voices of gay liberation. A founder of the gay publication he named Fagrag back in 1971. He also wrote one of his books, The Boston Sex Scandal, about the events that gave birth to GLAD. This isn't going to be a typical GLAD legal update. It's more like a call to action. And I want to argue for pessimism around a glass half empty. Now, everyone says it's good to organize a talk into three parts. So here are my three parts. One, part one, things used to be really bad. OK, part one over. <laughs> part two, it's gotten a hell of a lot better. Well, I hope you all know about our gains. Marriage equality in the six New England states, DOMA gone, people with HIV protected under the Americans with Disabilities Act, sodomy laws unconstitutional, laws banning discrimination based on sexual orientation in all six New England states, laws banning discrimination based on gender identity and expression in five of the six New England states. Okay, part two over. <laughs> part three, but don't kid yourself. That doesn't mean we're done. So what I really want to talk about tonight is my worry about my own complacency or smugness, or perhaps I should call it empathy. Back in 1979, I met John Ward when I was a second year BC law student. He took me to a Boston gay lawyer gathering. This group was social, and John's agenda was to get them from socializing to activism. Well, I've never forgotten that event. As a naive, lower middle class boy from Erie, Pennsylvania, I found myself in an astonishingly beautiful restored row house in the South End, standing around in a sumptuous library filled with handsome men drinking and talking, and our host, a partner in a prestigious Boston law firm, sitting in a beautiful armchair, responded to something provocative that John had said with this, I'm not oppressed. No gay person needs to be oppressed. I was shocked. Honestly, I still am. And I mention it tonight because I think I am, we all are today, in danger of being lulled into a similar complacency. My world's looking pretty good. I'm not feeling oppressed. I've got my job, got my family, getting my state and federal benefits just like everyone else. Guess, guess we're done. That's a pretty natural reaction, I suppose. We've worked hard, we've invested a lot, we've accomplished a lot. We're kind of tired and don't we get to relax? But the fact is, it's not so good for many of our brothers and sisters. And truth be told, not yet so good for any of us. Because is it really so good for any of us when our legal fate in the United States Supreme Court rests in the hands of one justice? and we can't be sure where that court might be headed in the future? Or when Congress refuses year after year to pass national protections against employment discrimination? Or that when scientists measure disgust, you know how we react at the prospect of, say, eating a cockroach? That gay men and our sexuality sits right at the very tippy top of that list. Not so good. So do we think my non-oppressed law partner sitting in splendor in the South End in 1979 was really free or simply anesthetized by the sense of safety that money and privilege had bought him. Let me posit some pieces of a goal so we can test where we are in relation to it. Imagine a world in which every child can grow up experiencing and developing their sense and expressions of sexuality and gender without any negative cultural bias or stereotypes. Yeah. And, where, and where no sexual orientation or gender identity or expression of itself has negative consequences in education, employment, housing, medical care, 
access to public services or accommodation or in one's participation in any level of government or civic institutions. And where sexual orientation or gender identity has no relevance to personal safety and well-being anywhere in the world, and particularly for those who are young or elderly or in the care or custody of a government. So now think about some of the things we know to be true today. Not 35 years ago, but today. For our young people in school where the most common slur remains, oh, that is so gay where so-called comprehensive sex education virtually never includes the sexuality of LGBTQ youth, where the curriculum is a wasteland when it comes to teaching America's youth about LGBT history, where pitched battles are fought over innocuous books that show the broad diversity of America's families, where we win those legal battles but lose those wars when schools choose the safer path of dropping the book, in order to avoid conflict and cost. And that doesn't even touch on the epidemic of bullying and more broadly the fact that LGBT people are by far the largest target of hate crimes in America measured by percentage of the population. Are we really ready to declare victory? And if no, and if we think about things are bad in our schools, peek at the lives of youth who are homeless or are in the care of the state. We could talk endlessly about this topic, but let me just say that between 20 and 40% of all homeless youth in this country, i.e. that's hundreds of thousands of youth are LGBT. And the prime causes of that, conflict and abandonment at home and victimization in school. And when LGBT youth end up in foster care or in the juvenile justice system, they are totally misunderstood and unattended to. GLAD's been ramping up its efforts in the youth area. Roughly three full-time lawyers plus a number of education staffers attempt to address these many issues by doing outreach to young people and to the people who work with youth, collaborating with other organizations and public officials on improving policies and regulations in areas affecting youth, intervening legally in situations where youth are being treated inappropriately, and exploring litigation where changes in the law might broadly improve the lives of our youth we could easily become GLIAD, gay and lesbian youth advocates and defenders, and the work for and with LGBTQ youth would still overwhelm us at our size today. Let's talk about employment, which remains a huge issue for our community. Many of us do not feel secure at work and are unable to be open and honest about our lives on the job. Fully 60% of LGBT employees encounter anti-gay slurs or jokes at work, and roughly 25% of LGB employees report hitting the, quote, gay ceiling, being passed over for promotion because of their sexual orientation. And a full quarter of transgender employees report having been fired from a job solely because of their gender identity. Ready to declare victory? Glad is refocusing on employment, knowing that the simple fact that we have laws against employment discrimination in the six New England states with a few holes around transgender protection is not enough. We need to explore new and creative ways to improve this situation. One thing we're doing right now is charting a path to end employers' refusal to extend health insurance benefits to our spouses when different sex spouses are covered. So let me make a pitch. If you work for a company that is self-insured, and that refuses to extend spousal, spousal coverage to your spouse, or if you know someone in that situation, let us know. Email me, contact our GLAD answer service, but get in touch. We are trying to put this to an end. So now, think about HIV for a moment. And that's one of the problems today. We collectively have not been thinking about HIV. And while we have been diverting our eyes, bad things have been happening. The CDC identifies 7% of the population as men who have sex with men, and they account for 78% of all new infections, a 12% increase among gay men between 2008 and 2010. And of the new infections for gay men, the highest numbers among young African-American men. Think about this, roughly 1,000 teenagers a month are becoming infected, and 45% of them are African-American. The most heavily affected population right now is gay males between the ages of 13 and 24 who experienced a 22% increase between 2008 and 2010. Are we ready to declare victory yet? GLAD is 
committed to being a part of a renewed community effort to stamp out this disease for good, something that all the experts agree is within reach if only we will focus our attention on this work. And for those living with the disease, GLAD has most recently been focused on lipodystrophy, a side effect of some AIDS medications that cause pockets of fat accumulation in the body, commonly around the neck and shoulders, creating both physical and emotional discomfort and harm. Well, as seems so amazingly common with medical treatments facing LGBT people, the insurance industry deems treatment of lipodystrophy cosmetic and therefore not covered. GLAD has challenged this absurd position a number of times and prevailed. However, we realize that the insurers would effectively see GLAD coming, cave, provide the coverage to our client, but then continue as a general practice to refuse to cover this important treatment. So we decided that a legislative fix is necessary and we started here in Massachusetts. GLAD is leading a coalition to pass legislation to mandate that insurers end their callous treatment of people living with HIV and cover lipodystrophy treatments. So if GLAD or some other organization reaches out to you in the months ahead to lend your voice in support of this bill in the legislature, please, please respond and do what they ask. Criminalization of HIV also. <laughs> Criminalization of HIV also remains an issue, whether based on sexual activity or other interactions with people with HIV. GLAD has worked on this issue before, and we are now providing counsel to a young person with HIV who has been overcharged with the felony of attempted murder based upon their interaction with a police officer that would have been a simple assault in any other case. So youth, employment, HIV, and we are just getting started. For all of our transgender brothers and sisters, the issues are even broader and vastly in need of urgent legal attention. Does anyone think our culture's policing of gender and gender expression is good for any of us? Does anyone think that work is done? We are committing new resources to GLAD's Transgender Rights Project, including having added a new staff attorney in September to address as many of the issues facing the transgender community as we can. For example, as you saw, we are representing a young transgender woman who was denied a bed in a women's dormitory in a homeless shelter and made to sleep in a storage area. And we are awaiting a decision from the highest court of Maine on the challenge to the denial of access to the girls' restroom for a transgender girl in elementary school. And then there is the coalition work where GLAD is critical to the effort to finish the work on the Massachusetts transgender non-discrimination law to add protections in public accommodations. And of course, there are the rampant exclusions of gender transition care from so many, many insurance policies and from Medicare and Medicaid, and GLAD is in the thick of the strategic and practical work to end these exclusions both locally and nationally. Thanks. Beyond, beyond these areas of concern, there are so many more that I don't have time to give more than a mention. Think of the LGBT elders who are afraid to be out in a long-term care facility, and for good reason, given recent studies. In one of them, 43% had witnessed or experienced mistreatment of LGBT seniors. GLAD is working to put additional resources into this new important area. Why, and why isn't our country more hospitable to asylum claims from LGBT people from around the world who are harassed, hunted down, criminalized, even tortured and killed simply for being LGBT? Why, why, why is it still okay? Why is it still okay to exclude transgender soldiers from our military? Why do our laws continue to fail to make room for how our families are formed and thus fail to recognize those whom our children surely know are their parents? Why is there so much credence given to the idea that any person, based upon a simple statement of religious belief, can discriminate against an LGBT person in any way, even simple things like selling them a cake? So can I ask you one last time, do we really think it would be okay to declare victory? No, I'm, I, I was pretty sure your answer would be the same as mine, no. Okay, so I don't want to be a total Debbie Downer. We, we, we surely have knocked down some huge barriers in the past 35 years. We've made inroads in some areas of heterosexual privilege like marriage and the military and the Boy Scouts. 
We have marvelous opinions from important courts like our Massachusetts Supreme Judicial Court with the beautiful opinion in the Goodrich case written by our distinguished honoree tonight, Chief Justice Margaret H. Marshall. Those, those opinions are laying the groundwork for legal progress to be made in the future as the words dignity and equality, for example, are associated with our community. More important, we have created momentum and opportunities to push forward. So let's keep going. Let's keep building on this momentum. Let's take the attitude that the glass is only still, is still half empty and be pessimistic for justice and equality's sake. And as GLAD does its legal work, I submit it's our duty to focus intensely on what is missing in the half-empty glass. And we need you to join us just as intensely in that focus on what still needs to be done. So let me come full circle and back to one of my two heroes, John Mitzel. As Michael Bar Bronsky just wrote in remembering him, John was, quote, one of the generation who invented, invented and fought for gay liberation. For the sake of our greatest generation, let's remember and honor them by finishing the work and making total liberation a reality. From everyone at GLAD, thank you for your support. We do this work because you make it possible. Thank you. <laughs>